What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys a deck that you have all been asking for. Literally it feels like every single time I drop a deck profile it's like, hey Spanko, when are you gonna update? Scrap Dino. You heard it here first folks, we're doing Scrap Dino in today's video. I waited purposely to post Darkwing Blast. I'm gonna explain to you guys why I waited to post this set. There's a lot of changes both in the metagame but within the deck itself that I think actually brings up this deck to a whole nother level. And again, I'm gonna explain all that in the video so make sure you guys stick around and watch the whole thing because I get really in depth with it but it'll make a lot of sense. So if you guys do enjoy these videos though, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on Spanko, deck profiles, dual videos, combo videos, all that good stuff right here on the channel. Speaking of combo videos, if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comment section down below and I can show you guys another Scrap Dino combo video for post Darkwing Blast. Now with that being said, I don't want to keep you guys waiting for too long. Let's jump right into the deck profile. All right, so it's finally here, Scrap Dino. I was waiting for Darkwing Blast to release because the set indirectly really, really buffs this deck and helps it keep up with today's meta. So for that reason, I did wait out on this video, but it's finally here. So we're gonna be starting off, of course, with the main man himself, three Soul Eating OV Raptor, as in one Miscellaneousaurus. Now, Miscellaneousaurus is kind of the reason why I've been waiting out on this deck for so long. DD Crow is one of the most popular hand traps in today's format, and and so for that reason, I was thinking, hey, Scrap Dino is really going to struggle if your miscellaneous gets DD Crowed. However, what's really cool now is the Bestial Monsters are really going to take place in a lot of decks over the DD Crow. Even if it's just some people who are swapping the DD Crows for the Bestial Monsters, what ends up happening is your miscellaneous source is not a light or a dark. So it's never going to get hit with a Bisted Monster, which means it's a lot more safe. So do you see what I mean by it indirectly helped this deck out? Because now if people are on DD Crow less and they're on the Bestial Monsters more, then you're more safe to full combo with this deck which is really nice right so with the one miscellaneous of course we're playing the two ultimate conductor tyranno two is all you need three baby sarasaurus as well as one petite pteranodon you have to be playing these ratios of course because you are playing the scrap engine it's very important that you play at least four names this is all you're really going to need i wouldn't play more than four but i would not play less than four for sure and then to accompany that we are playing the two animadora i've you know i've this card has been out for years i've been playing this deck for years and i've never been able to say this name but we're playing two archosaur of course you have to be playing two just because you don't want to draw the one it's not a bad normal summon for you don't get me wrong if you draw it with a baby but of course you still don't want to draw it so you are playing the two just in case you do draw the one you can still full combo and then you are playing the one pancratops now pancratops may be a go second card and this is definitely a go first kind of deck but the really cool synergy pancratops has is with petite pteranodon you can actually end your turn with a pancratops on your side of the field so it can actually be part of your combo and you have that as another form of disruption then we're playing the one giant rex of course and then for the scrap engine we're playing two scrap raptors as well as one scrap chimera we're not playing golem that's just another brick in the deck that you don't want to play you don't want to play three scrap raptor either i was trying three for a while but i actually cut it down to two and the reason for that was because you just have too many normal summons in the deck like your ov raptor you would always rather do this over a scrap raptor so drawing an ov raptor plus a scrap raptor is actually not a great hand even archosaur is actually a pretty good normal summon if you draw it with a baby as well so for that reason it's like i'd rather just not summon the scrap raptor scrap raptor really just plays the same role as arco does where it's like i really want to pull it out of my deck i want to combo with it but i really don't want to see it in my opening hand now speaking of combos just before we get into the rest of the deck here i do want to say the really cool thing about this deck is if you open misc plus ov or you open ov plus baby or you open misc plus baby there's still full combo there's so many two card combos in this deck which ends on the same insane boards and so that's the reason why i think this deck is just so powerful and it's really good going second at the end of the day yes this is a going first deck but you are playing dino you're playing big conductor tyranno you're playing hand traps as you guys can see you're playing a bunch of cards that do help you go second so for that reason it's like hey this is a go first combo deck but the scrap engine itself is also really good going second because it gives you access to scrap wyvern which can pop cards your opponent controls that's why i think this deck is just really really cool and i know i'm getting excited i haven't done a dino profile in a while but i think this deck is just better now than it was just before darkwing blast i know it's crazy just the fact that darkwing blast released i think this deck is just way more powerful moving on to the important dino spells here we are playing the three fossil dig as well as the two double evolution pill i'm pretty sure this is just standard stuff more than two double evolution pills is obviously a brick but then on top of that fossil dig is your not once per turn road rush, so you got to play three of this and you're playing the new bestial monsters all right so i'm gonna get into this and this is another reason why darkwing blast helped this deck out so much you're playing three of the magnemut i think i'm saying that right three bestial magnemut as well as a one druid worm now why are we playing these cards first of all they act as hand traps for you they rdd crows against decks like tier limits which is going to be considered one of the best decks of today's 
format. This is also going to provide you with a body on your side of the field that can help you push for a lot of damage, or it can just help you link climb as well. So there's just a variety of things these cards can do for you. And them being level six is pretty cool because it gives us access to a new monster from Darkwing Blast as well. That is insanely powerful, which I'll get into when we get into the extra deck. But for the main deck, of course, these are acting as more DD Crows for you. And that's never a bad thing. It's just another hand trap essentially. And they're also non dinos that you can use for your double evolution pill if they are in the graveyard, which is really nice. So the three Magnemite as well as the one Druid Worm. Then we are playing three Pot of Prosperity. Prosperity is really good in this deck, especially because it's a go first combo version of the deck. You really don't care about OTKing your opponent. Funny enough though, if you are going second, there are ways where you can actually OTK through Prosperity. Yeah, that's, that's crazy, but you can really do it, especially with access to cards like Dugaris in your extra deck. But that's not going to happen too often. You still want to go first. You want to see your combo pieces and Prosperity always helps you get to your combo pieces. And we're playing the one Call by the Grave, of course, so we don't lose the hand traps. Next, we're playing the three DD Crow. Yes, we're still playing DD Crow. Even though we're playing the Bisted Monsters, we're still playing DD Crow. Now, what is the reason for this? I'll, I'll give you guys a couple of reasoning, okay? First of all, DD Crow in just general is really good today's format because you can even hit Runic cards because it doesn't have to be a monster. Keep that in mind. So you can even hit the Runic cards when they activate Fountain to put their cards back and draw cards. It's good against a Sprite matchup if they try to Elf something back. There's just so many different matchups where DD Crow is good. Now, you guys might be thinking about Spanko, but your Bestial Monsters are just going to do that for you anyways. Well, the Bestial Monsters aren't going to hit everything. They only hit Light or Dark Monsters. But on top of that, the really cool thing is once DD Crow's in the graveyard, it's also a Dark Monster where if your opponent doesn't have any Light or Dark Monsters in their graveyard, you can just banish your own DD Crows to summon your Bisted Monsters, which is insane. That's why I think the synergy with the Bisted stuff in this deck is just so powerful. There's so many different things it provides you with, and that's why I really like the DD Crows as well as the Bisted Monsters, because it's a lot of graveyard hate, which is really important in today's format, but it's also just synergy with the overall deck. Again, these are not dinos, so it's also good for double evolution pill, which is why I like the DD Crows. Of course, we're playing three Ash Blossom. Ash is just the most generic hand trap. You want to be playing three Ash. You could argue to play Imperm instead or Nibiru. It's really up to you. I just decided to play Ash because it is the most generic one. However, yeah, you can just play any other three hand trap here instead. We're playing the one artifact Scythe. Yes, we're still playing this. Even though we don't have Halka Fibrax, we're still playing the Scythe because you can actually end on a combo where you end on Dagda with Scythe and Conductor with a Tornado Dragon on your side of the field. And Tornado Dragon helps you pop your own Scythe on your opponent's turn. So now you're still going to be able to Scythe lock your opponent. So that's why Scythe is still really, really important to play. It's a really good card. And of course, drawing Scythe. The funny thing about Scythe is drawing it. Yes, it's kind of a brick in terms of your comboing. But if you can just end on a Tornado Dragon and you just set your own Scythe from your hand, you can still pop it on your opponent's turn and you're still going to Scythe lock your opponent. So that's why Scythe is a really cool card where it's like, Yes, it's a brick, but you can play around your own brick. Then lastly, I decided to go back to playing Lost World. Now, the reason I left this for last is because I may explain it a little bit, but we're playing the three Lost World as well as the one terraforming so we can get to our Lost World. Now, Lost World is really good in today's format just because not being able to target your dino monsters on the field is just really powerful in a lot of situations. So for that reason, it's like, hey, we have our own protection with our dino stuff. But on top of that, if you open your Lost World with like an OV, it'll still help you combo, which is really nice. The thing is with this deck is you you really want to be able to go first and with every hand be able to combo and so for that reason i thought the lost world package was really powerful the lost world package is also really good going second because the thing is when you're going second you're putting your opponent's monsters all down 500 attack and defense which is really relevant in a deck like this one because if you do go prosperity and you do go something into dugaris your opponent having less attack on their monsters also just does help you otk right so that's why i think lost world just for multiple reasons is really really powerful and that's why i decided to play these as the last four cards in the deck now you guys can see we're at 41 cards in the main deck. I know a lot of people have cut Lost World from their list recently. I, for one, was someone who didn't play Lost World for a long time just because I didn't think it was great anymore. So what you can do is if you guys don't want to play the Lost World, I think now is a good time for you to play Lost World. However, if you guys don't want to play the Lost World, you can cut out four cards. That's going to leave you at 37. And then those last three cards could just be three more hand traps. That's all you need to do really for this deck to still be viable. I still think the Lost World in this build right now is really, really powerful. But but just in general, if you guys don't want to play the Lost World or in the future, if you guys are in a new format and you guys are like, Lost World is not great this format, then you can take these out and put more hand traps in. I, for one, was not playing Lost World in the last format because when Despia was really popular and relevant, Mirror Jade didn't target, so Lost World didn't really matter, right? So that was kind of one of the reasons why I wasn't playing Lost World. But again, now I think we're in a format where Lost World is very justified and you should be playing it. Moving on to the extra deck here, it is pretty standard scrap dino extra deck stuff that you guys can see in most builds. You're playing the one Logia and the one Dolk of course we're playing the one tornado dragon the one dweller dweller is really powerful because if you didn't have enough graveyard hate as it is you have dweller which is just more graveyard hate we're playing the one dugaris dugaris really you only ever go into when you 
you're trying to OTK through prosperity. Otherwise, you don't really go into this card that often. If you're going first a lot of time, I actually will just banish the Dugaris off of the prosperity because I know a lot of people have questions and they're like, hey, when you do prosperity, what cards do you banish or what kind of cards do you banish? It all kind of depends. If you know the matchup you're going into, let's say you're going into a matchup where Dweller is not that good, you can banish the Dweller. But if you go into a matchup where, you know, it's tier limits and you want to go into Dweller and they're just going to pass their turn if you Dweller them, then you're going to want to keep it, of course, right? So there's a lot of different situations. So you guys have to be able to make that decision on your own. But again, like I said, Dugaris is one of those cards I'm always banishing unless I'm trying to OTK through Prosperity. And then this is one of the new cards from Darkwing Blast. I don't think the name, you guys can see the name here. It says like Volo. I don't think it's Volo. I think in the TCG it's Willow or Wallow. I can't remember what the TCG name is, but this card's insane. I'm going to read it out to you because I know my face cam is actually, actually, you know what? I'm actually going to remove my face cam here so you guys can read it. The effect pretty much reads that monsters you control gain 100 attack and defense for each card in your opponent's graveyard. Cool. That does help you OTK as well, which is really nice. Quick effect. You can target one card in your opponent's graveyard, detach one or two materials from this card to activate the appropriate effect. So if you detach one, you shuffle it back into the deck. It's another kind of DD Crow S card, which is really good because it just requires two level six monsters. Your Bistials are multiple level six monsters, so you can go into this. And then if you detach two so if you detach one you just get to shuffle but if you detach two you can special summon it to your side of the field assuming that you shuffled back a monster so the really cool thing about this card is you can just pretty much use it twice because i don't know if you're going to be doing the detach two very often but you will be doing the detach one all the time as a dd crow kind of card so i think this card is really really powerful it's another card that was introduced in darkwing blast and so for that reason i just think it gives the dino and the bisted package just another layer of complexity 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 that's not the word that's the word complexity so it gives it another layer of just a really cool different interaction that most of your opponents will not be able to play around then of course we're playing the one scrap wyvern, and the one link karibo and the secure gardener there's a combo where essentially if you kind of get hand trapped a few times you just end on this so that you have pill fodder one pentasec to help you otk one dagda of course to get to your scythe one ip mascarena one axis code talker one apollo as well as one borrow load savage dragon i don't think a lot of this needs explaining we all know how scrap dinos work so i think it's really cool that we get to play these still very combo version of the deck however you get introduced to a lot of these new cards post darkwing blast and again the main reason why i'm profiling this deck now and i've been waiting for so long to profile it until this moment is because this one card right here if we had three miscellaneousaurus it would not be a problem but because we only have the one miscellaneousaurus i think dd crow being so relevant made this deck actually a lot harder to play because it lost a lot easier it was a lot more glass cannon however if people are going to be moving to the bestial stuff then your miscellaneous is actually going to be safer and then on top of that you're going to be able to play the steal stuff yourself which is really really powerful so i think you guys should try this deck out this deck is insane one of my favorite decks and i know you guys have been asking for it forever so we're finally here we're finally showing it off i think this deck is really really cool it's really really powerful and again yeah i just think you guys should try it out for yourselves so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that was scrap dino post darkwing blast again it's very important that post darkwing blast i did this deck profile because it just synergizes so much with the cards that were released in darkwing blast but i also think the way the meta is going to be shifting actually actually helps Dino a lot because again, if the bestial monsters become very prominent, then what happens is your miscellaneous source is going to be a lot more safe from cards like DD Crow, which in the last few months have been one of the best hand traps in the game. So for that reason, I hope you guys took what I said and kind of put it together. Maybe it makes a little bit of sense, but if you guys have any suggestions, of course, let me know in the comment section down below. If you guys want to see a combo video, also let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you guys did enjoy though, because it does help out the channel a lot. We do upload five days a week here on Spanko, deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, product openings all that good stuff right here on the channel so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned in for all of that thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you with that spank goes i don't know peace